they're never gonna forget this, and I'm not gonna let them. So here we go. This is their wake-up call. So I just arrived here in Augusta, Georgia. Well, it's the week of the Masters. People come from all over the world to be here this week. So it's a little fun. There's a lot of mystique around the city. I'm out here because I have the chance to meet with probably a top 10 pick and possibly the number one overall pick in the NFL draft this year, Josh Allen. Not only did he have a phenomenal career at Wyoming and he blossomed into one of the top NFL prospects, but his coaches also had previously coached a guy by the name of Carson Wentz. He's heading into this draft now with a lot of hype, a lot of excitement. Everybody's been telling him how great he is leading up to the draft, and deservedly so, but uh, I'm excited to get to know him and maybe you know, remind him a little bit of what it's gonna take to succeed in the NFL, and so excited to sit down one-on-one -on -one with him, pick his brain, learn a little bit about where he's come from, and talk to him a little bit about where he's headed. Hey, Josh. How are you doing? Good, man. Great to meet you. Great to meet you. Thanks for letting me come yeah, no by. Problem. Thanks for coming by. Here's play action for Josh Allen. Steps up, zips it deep for the touchdown. Jared Scott his second touchdown grab of the season. And the Cowboys strike quickly on their second possession. All right, so we're here in Augusta. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest places on earth. You and I would both agree. Just tell me a little bit about your day to day at the Masters. Just, I mean, one of the greatest moments of my life, coming here and getting to experience what I've done. And I mean, it's something that not a lot, lot of people get to go through. Tell you what, there's plenty more where that came from. I hope so. So you just get ready and get excited about what's yeah. coming down the line. So it's been well documented. You're from a small town, mm -hmm. you're from a farming community, arguably had a big impact on your lack of recruitment coming out of high school. But tell me a little bit about the town you grew up in and uh, how it's impacted the person you are right now entering the NFL draft. Yeah, so it's a small town, about five to 6,000 people. Goes by the name of Fireball. You know, I grew up on a farm, and the community that we had in Fireball was very family-like. You know, everybody knew everybody. And when you're playing, like, rec league or little league baseball, you're playing with the same guys that you're going to play in high school. I like that. So the camaraderie that you build when you're younger just carries over into your high school years, and it's just kind of a really neat experience that a lot of bigger towns don't get to have. Sure. So coming out of Fireball, you you – are, are about 40 minutes outside Fresno. Yep. Fresno State is the team, right? Yeah. And that's the team you follow. They had two chances to offer you a scholarship and passed both times. Tell me how that happened or why that happened. Uh, that's kind of like the million dollar question <laughs> in Fireball and Fresno, but you know, I, I really don't know. Um, you know, I was a little underdeveloped coming out of high school. I was kind of 6'3", 180 pounds. Would it be safe to say you were a late bloomer? I was a late but bloomer. But you kept growing and kept getting bigger and stronger and faster, faster. post high school? Correct. Okay. And Sometimes the best athletes, that's the case. You know, fortunately, things work out in serious ways. Yeah, and certainly. I was, uh, ended up in Wyoming, and that's the place where I needed to be. Tell me a little bit about your running ability, because, you know, when you watch your highlights, that's a big part of your game. It's a dynamic part of your game. The jaw-dropping stuff comes from your athleticism, from your ability to run, carry the football. But yet it also cost you your collarbone one yeah. season. So talk about what you're thinking there as you enter the NFL. You know, I think it's uh, definitely a different mindset that I have now going into the NFL. I knew that this past season especially, having an extra blocker in our running back was going to allow us to be better in the running game. Yeah. So I right. knew that, uh, you know, having that responsibility on me to, to kind of make plays happen on my, um, on my feet was something that we were going to have to do to, to win football games. Wow. Going to the NFL now, you know, you're not asking quarterbacks to do that anymore, you know, unless you're a yeah. freak like Cam Newton. <laughs> um, You've got that ability, though. What I will say is don't let anybody tell you you shouldn't do it. Yeah. And don't let anybody tell you you can do it whenever you want. Yeah. There's always a balance. I think virtue lies in the middle. You know, I'm a guy who did not run the football well. You took off a few times last but year. But yet I've, had, I've been known to run a little bit. Yeah. And, and I think I have, you know, over 10 touchdowns over the last three years because it is a weapon, as you said. But by all means, tuck it and run. You see man coverage and it's two man and there's nobody covering you. Go yeah. and get as many yards as you can, but do things to protect yourself. But by all means, be the great athlete you are and use that to your advantage. That's a big reason why you would go high in the draft. Absolutely. 2016, mm -hmm. you have a phenomenal year at Wyoming. Could have come out. Yep. When you have the arm you have, you probably could have come out at 18 years old and impressed people. But you could have come out last year, chose not to. Tell me about that decision, how hard it was. Once you made it, were you at peace? Was there still a little bit of wavering? Talk about that. It's kind of a thought that didn't pop into my head, you know, 
throughout the season. We got to our final game, which was the bowl game against BYU, and there was a few agents calling me and texting me and just trying to figure out the, what I wanted to do. Obviously, that was playing the bowl game first. Right. So we played the bowl game, ended on an interception, the mm. last throw I threw. Mm. Um, you know, a few days later, there's a mock draft that comes out and puts me at like number three overall <laughs> or something like that. And my parents are going crazy and all of a sudden more agents are contacting me and talking of to course. me. And, you know, it was the most like hectic two weeks of my life. Because and you're you got, 21 years old, 20 years 20 old? 20 years old at the time. 20 years old. And at that time, I just couldn't see myself making the leap because hmm. I just felt like I needed one more year and I couldn't, you know, end my career at Wyoming with an interception. Sure. Um, so, I mean, that didn't play a lot into it, but yeah, that but it it had its part. It was a level of completion. You know, I respect you for making a tough decision, uh, probably making the tougher decision in terms of I can take an easier path with a little more glory and success right away or I can take a longer route for a longer term return. Yeah. You chose the longer return. I think that says a lot about you as a person. I think that'll serve you well going forward. I mean, you could have been at the Masters last year. Yeah, I could have been. You know, so you, you understand you gave up some things in the short term mm -hmm. for a better long term return on investment. And I think you made a good decision. Time will tell. Yeah. But I think that's going to prove to be the right decision. And so many times in my life, big decisions on the football field with where to play in college and uh, where to go in free agency has come down to where do I feel at peace? Yeah. At the end of the day, in my gut, where do I feel a peace? And um, I think if you can continue to use that, it'll serve you well. First of all, I got the iPad linked to the TV. Oh man. Throwback. Going back to sophomore year, I was maybe five, five, 140 pounds here. You really were a late bloomer. Yeah. Who's on the other That's side? That's my brother. Okay. He's uh, 13 months younger than I am. So, yeah. so tell me about your relationship with your brother. I've got an older brother who's two years older than me, and he's been like my biggest cheerleader. Uh, he missed, I think, one game of mine in college he's actually chosen job fields and careers near you so that he can be there no so way. that he can be a part of it That's so he awesome. can be at games you know throughout the draft process down in southern california is where he was living really he caught for us me and sam and kyle he sounds almost, like my relationship with my brother he still runs every routes day. for me almost and my brother was day. a baseball player and no so i, you I know swear my brother like. can come play tight end somewhere that's awesome but no he's yeah. uh you should yeah, put in a good wood friend. for him wherever you go i'm trying to <laughs> Uh, tell me about this game here. Central Michigan is our bowl game. It's the final game we played in, or at least I played it's in. It's your last college yeah, game. Yeah, it was a wow. fun one. Our defense forced eight turnovers that game. Believe eight turnovers. Eight. That helps a quarterback. Yeah. Let me tell you, you're probably not going to get that many Never Sundays again. in the NFL. Yeah. But when you do, you better win. Oh, yeah. I mean, we did. <laughs> and you we did. did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good job, man. I love it. All right, so let's right. get to the highlights. All right, so we're in the bowl game here. Yeah. This is your last college game. Left tight, pass 47, double post. So just double post, huh? Yep. Tell me about the coverage. Did you feel the safety jump the inside post? Yeah, so I mean, we knew that they were kind of a big cover four team. Like most teams in college, right? Yep. You see a lot of quarters. Yep, so we were just trying to play off that inside safety, let him bite on the inside post. I was keeping my eyes on that guy just in case. But it's a tight window, right? Even yeah. if he bites, because he can redirect. Absolutely, so That's he's kind of midpointed there, but our tight end did a good, jo good enough job in making him commit early, um, gave me time to make a throw. Hence, the arm strength being necessary. Because Correct. if that safety can get back there or the corner can make a play, you've got to be able to knife it. Great catch by your receiver, yeah. too. You're able to catch your ball like uh -huh. that, man, in cold weather to come down with he that seed. He got two catches this year for two touchdowns. Really? Believe it or not. Yep, two double posts. Well, maybe we should get involved a little more next yeah, year. And the next time, guy, yeah. you can send a note to, note to the coach. All right, so... Just another double little post little play action out of the yep. gun. Double post versus quarters, right? Yep. This one has a little more air on it. Bang the outside post. Did a great job tracking the ball, great throw. Let me tell you, man, you see quarters in the NFL, you check the double post just about every time or put your inside receiver on a basic and you throw that post. Yeah, you have you launch ball it, right man. there. You launch it. That's the dream play versus that coverage. Yeah, there's plenty more where that came from, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. That's awesome. Did you have fun that day? Oh, yeah. It was fun getting back on the field. Yeah, you throttle these guys. You throttle the guys from my home state, man, Central <laughs> Michigan. <laughs> Tough game right here, huh? Ah, fell apart the yeah. fourth quarter. We were down seven points going into it. So was it a choice route? Or did you know he was breaking out? So, I mean, we had recently gone over whether we're seeing green grass and going or in zone, we're gonna sit down. Um, mm -hmm. So we were just kind of off off page here. Hmm. Obviously, I, I threw it where I wasn't supposed to throw it and it caused us to so have he felt, turnover. So he felt man and you, you felt might be zone? Correct. I mean, this is the NFL, right? Because these details, are everything mm -hmm. and it's 
It's why Tom Brady's Tom Brady. It's why Peyton Manning's Peyton Manning. Let me tell you. They know exactly what's going on. They know exactly what's going on because on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, they repped that play so many times for so many different looks with that back that that back was rolling his eyes. And he was calling his mom when he got home and said, I'm sick and tired of working with Peyton Manning. I can't wait till he retires. He's driving me nuts. Yeah. But then that guy catches that ball. And then the next play, he makes another play. And the next thing you know, that guy goes to the Pro Bowl because of Peyton Manning and yeah. because of the way he disciplined him and coached him and trained him. We all have had these miscues, but the more you can rep stuff, the more you can say, hey, you know, why don't you stay after practice? Let's go over that again. Yeah. You know, let me give you a late man zone call, or let's have a couple of coaches stand out there, and, and you won't know what they're going to do at the last second. They're going to either man you up or play zone, and you've got to make that decision. And who knows if three or four reps post-practice on Thursday turns into a completion on Sunday mm. and then turns into a win and then turns into a Pro Bowl or a playoff win or a Super Bowl. You, you know, it's, it's just those details, and again, to do that, to stay after practice and to think about, you know, maybe a little extra work here or there, you got to love football and you got to be the kind of guy who's wired to think like that. And that's what ends up making you a great quarterback. Football's not a hobby. Yeah. At this level, it's a job and treat it like that. Be a pro. And I'm not going to let them. So here we go. This is their wake up call. X's and O's, draw for me a favorite play. I just want to see you talk ball a little bit yeah. and uh, help me understand where you're coming from so I have a better idea of what you've been coached to do. Do you want to see a coverage here or? Yeah, I'll draw up 11 guys on defense or seven in coverage and I would love to see that. All right, so we got gun right wide strong, fake 60 combo dragon left. We got a gimme go on the outside Talk here. Talk to me about what a gimme go is. So, I mean, it, we're going to look over there if we like the matchup. Um, if he's pressed here and we got a big receiver out here, if it's okay. third and eight, Take it now and okay. let him go get it. How aggressive do they tell you to be on that? Not very aggressive. Okay. If, if we feel like he's going to so get beat say, up the line. Let's say you love it. Love it. Third and eight, you love it. You took it. Throw it. And you missed it. Or we didn't come down with it. The DB broke it up. Do you get second guessed when you come to the sideline and say, why, why did you love it? You know, you should have read, read it out. Or do they, do they let you, do they trust you and say, you know what? They trusted me and my okay. coach said the best conviction is completion. So <laughs> like as long too. as it's completed, you know, he had no problem with it, but... Well, be when it ready. Started becoming a problem. Be ready, just because the NFL is a high-stakes environment. That at times you're going to be given freedom yeah. to make some decisions, and when they go right, everyone's going to tell you how great you are, pat you on the back. That same exact decision, if the result is not what what we all wanted, just be ready to be second-guessed. Yeah. And you either have to be coachable and say you're absolutely right, my fault. I'll be better next time, or you got to be so confident that you don't let it get you, and you say, you know what, I'm going to make that throw every time. Yeah. And there's a reason I did it, and I have conviction, and I'm going to go back to it. But being wishy-washy in the middle and indecisive is where you get in trouble. That, oh, last time they didn't like it, and my rules say to go there, but when I went there last time, it didn't work. That's when you get in trouble. Yeah. So my point is, is when you get those alerts, those gimme goes, those, hey, if it's there, take it. Be decisive. Can you talk to me about protection, what your rules are, and in, in, in uh, where the protection is actually stated in the play? 60 combo is our protection. Okay. Um, it's very similar to like a two or three jet in the NFL okay. where it's going to be basically a mic declared protection and the line they're going to work to mic to the okay. nickel or the Sam. If the mic pluses to the left side of the center and it was 60 combo, are we still going to go to the mic? So is his alignment going to like affect, right is his alignment going to affect the identification or is he still the mic? So in, in my cadence, I'm saying ready, set, blue 88, the eight, the 88, the even number signifies that we're going 62. So if I went 62, if I felt that he was lined over here, we're going to work this way. So they're going to go Mike to Will, sort that out. The back's going to have eyes to nickel or the strong force. So you force could actually be backside. flipping the protection mid-cadence. Correct. Based on the Mike's alignment. Yeah, based because on whether Mike alignment or if I feel free safety coming rolling low, down, rotation, sure. anything like that. Sure. We're going to go 62. Um, and that's really just called, if I mess up, I say blue 88, easy, easy, 63, 63, sure. black go. Sure. And those are all the same principles you're going to do on Sundays, which will make it for a much easier transition. It won't Correct. feel foreign or strange. The mechanics of how you do it, you know, with the Redskins, it could be a flipper-flipper call. Yeah. But you're just going to make that call to say, hey, the issue is no longer where you guys are going. Let's send you guys to the issue. Correct. So in quarters, you're still going to give that gimme-go a look, or are you going right to the post? I'm going to give him a look and see if he can win. Yeah. And so you're still work gradually right. get back Make to the Make sure post. that if yeah. we are getting quarters or if they're rolling a quarter, quarter, half or something like that, that we're still moving our eyes in the right direction. You never want to pass up a completion. Correct. Okay. And if you 
wanted the whole shot. You see it's obvious cloud covers to my left, and I think I got the whole shot, but the corner sinks. What's your response? Are you going to the flat to the back, or are you progressing across the board? Um, if I already made my decision, I'm going here, and I'm ready to throw, I'm probably just going to find that back and get yeah, it to him. I love it. Get out of dodge. Yeah. Avoid the hit. Avoid the sack. Avoid the negative play. Find completions. In this league, finding completions, you'll never be wrong, man. Yeah. Because, you know, take, get the ball out of your hand. Get it in the guy's hands who are paid to carry the football. Yeah. And get out of dodge. There's nothing wrong with that, ever. Absolutely. Nothing wrong with that. Especially early in the game when you're trying to get in a rhythm. Just take completions, whatever that is. Don't go looking for hole shots. Don't go looking for post routes. If the completion's there, take it. Yep. I was impressed with Josh. I think he knows football well. I think football matters to him. And he's well coached, well trained, and he has the physical tools. Some of the throws that he's made at Wyoming, he just can't teach. And there are moments in NFL games where you need somebody to be able to do that. And very few teams have a guy who can make those throws repeatedly. And, and Josh is that guy. So I'm excited for him. Josh, that's a great job. Thank man. you so I much. Really enjoy getting the chance to meet you. I'd like to think we're going to be competing against each other Should in I a hope few so. short months here, but I appreciate the time. I got a flight to catch, but uh, so excited for you, man. And uh, I have been what you're going through. Maybe not the level you're going through because I was a fourth round pick, but I know what it's like to enter the league as a college quarterback, have so much to learn. At times, you don't even know what you don't know. Yeah. And you're just trying to drink through a fire hose. And you know you're going to learn as you go. And you know things are going to happen off the field that you never had to deal with before. Marketing opportunities, family dynamics. All kinds of things come at you, financial people, and you got to make wise decisions. So I'm here as a resource. Talk to me anytime you want, in season, out of season. I want to see guys have success, make good decisions, and and uh, uh, realize the benefits that this league has for them. And I've certainly experienced that, and I think you will too. You come from great stock, and uh, can't wait to see what your future holds, man. I'll be watching the draft, cheering you on, and and uh, be right there with you. So. Absolutely. Time like this is invaluable. You know the things that. He told me the advice that he had for me. You know, you don't get that from coaches or, or family, friends, or media. You get that from real players. And I'm extremely grateful for the things he told me. And, uh, you know, he taught me some things tonight that I'll, I'll keep with me and um, hopefully one day use it against him. Thank Best you so luck, much. Man. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. And enjoy the Masters. Yeah, I'm going to. Right, trust man. me. Have fun. Thank you. All right.